Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be an introduction to coordinate systems. Coordinate systems allow us to represent abstract vector spaces in terms of familiar vector spaces like Rn, and also allow us to look at Rn from different perspectives. Now we've introduced this topic of coordinate systems before, so let's quickly look at, remind ourselves of one of the key theorems that's going to guide our discussion. The unique representation theorem says that if we're given some basis, some set of basis vectors for some vector space V, then for each element of V, each vector X that's in V, there exists a unique set of constants, C's, such that X can be represented as a linear combination of those basis vectors. So we know that because this is a basis, that it has to be onto the vector space, so every X must be a linear combination of some B's. But it's also because it's a basis, we know that these are linearly independent vectors, which means there's a unique linear combination to get us to x. So because there is only one value for each of these constants that makes this statement true, we can really identify this x vector with its constants. And so we will say that the coordinates of our vector x with respect to this basis beta will be equal to a list of these constants. And so this is the coordinate vector, the coordinate vector of x relative to b. So this is our definition of coordinates. Now the next question should be, how do we actually find coordinates? Well, in general, if we're given a basis and we want to find the coordinates of some vector x in terms of this basis, all we have to do is find out what these constants are, which essentially means solving this vector equation. But of course, that vector equation is the same thing as this matrix equation. And to solve that, we can just write out the augmented matrix and go through the solution steps. So solving this matrix equation is a way we can find the coordinates of x with respect to this basis in general. From here, though, we want to look at a specific coordinate system. We want to talk about a change of basis for Rn. So in general, we have something called the standard basis for all of Rn. Specifically for R2, this would be the standard basis. The standard basis just looks like the columns of the identity matrix of the appropriate size. So for R2, we have these two columns of the identity matrix, and these would be the standard basis for R2. Now if I took some vector, my vector 3, 2, for instance, this is a vector in R2, and I want to find its coordinates in terms of the standard basis. Well then, since if I take 3 of that first basis vector plus 2 of the second basis vector, I know that that's the linear combination will get me to my vector 3, 2. And therefore, the coordinates in the standard basis of x are just 3, 2. And this is really one of the features of the standard basis, that the vector has the same representation as its coordinates in terms of the standard basis. But now what we want to talk about is a change of basis away from the standard basis. So let's look at a different basis for R2. This is a different basis for R2, the vector 1, 0, and 1, 1. Let this be a basis for R2. I want to find the B coordinates of this vector 3, 2. So here's our symbol for the B coordinates of V. So once again, to find this, I'm trying to find the constant I can multiply by the first basis vector plus the constant times the second basis vector that's going to get me to this vector 3, 2. And of course, I could set up this matrix equation and write out the augmented system and solve this. But in this case, I can actually visually find this solution. Coordinates of V with respect to this is just going to be 1, 2. Because if I take one of the first vector and two of the second basis vector, I will get to that vector 3, 2. So those are my coordinates in terms of this new basis. But if I look back at this matrix equation, it's really saying that I'm taking some matrix, and this matrix is acting on my coordinates relative to beta, and the result are going to be my coordinates relative to the standard basis. And so I can kind of set up this matrix equation. And what is the special matrix P that when I multiply by my beta coordinates, it gives me my standard coordinates? Well, as we've seen here, it's just a matrix whose columns are the basis vectors beta. And so this is really going to be what I'm going to call a change 
of basis matrix. And once again, its columns are my basis vectors. Now, if we look at this equation a little more closely, say, well, what if I want to change in the other direction? What if I want to take standard coordinates and turn them into beta coordinates? Well, in this case, because I am going from R2 to R2, then I know that these two columns of PB are linearly independent because they are a basis. And then I know that that matrix is invertible. And so because the, I know the matrix is invertible, I can write out this equation. And so this will allow me to take standard coordinates and convert them over to beta coordinates. Now, if we think about what this looks like visually, if I were to kind of sketch out one of my coordinate systems, and what I'm seeing is that if I count in the standard basis, and I want to go over 3 and up 2, I will be led to this point. But now my new basis, I do have this 1, 0 vector, but I also have a 1, 1 vector. And so if I count in that direction, I'll be traveling along this line. And of course, I could do that over and over again and kind of draw out this new grid system. If I'm looking at my new grid system, I can see to get to that same point that I called 3, 2 in the standard basis, to get there, I would simply go 1 in my first beta direction and 2 in my second basis vector direction. So the coordinates to get me to this same point, but in this new basis, are really 1, 2. So 1, 2 in terms of the beta basis, or 3, 2 in terms of the standard basis, are really both representing the same vector. Now let's look at one more quick application of this. I'm going to look at this parametric curve. This parametric curve is the curve t comma t squared, and it's a parabola. And the way this parametric curve works is that if you give me any specific time value, for instance, t equals 1, my output will be a point. In this case, it will be the point 1, 1. And that is one point on this curve. And if I want to plot what this curve looks like, I can do that very quickly in Mathematica. I simply use the command parametric plot. And I'll put in the parametric equation, which would be t comma t squared. And then I'll give it a range of t values to plot this curve through. So I'll go t from negative a to a. And I should probably define a to be some value. I'll call it 5 in this problem. And I can look at my parametric plot here. Now, that doesn't look very nice because I have, um, I go from 0 to 25 in the y-axis, but only negative 5 to 5 in the x-axis. So I would like to fix the plot range so that looks a little prettier. And to do that, I'll fix a range of y, x and y values to show my plot. I will go from negative a to a and from negative a to a. Now I have a nice clean picture. And so this is what my, my plot looks like. But now I'd like to see what this curve looks like if instead of looking at it in the standard basis, I was thinking about that same curve, but in terms of my other basis. So what does this mean? Before I was thinking about this as the point 1, 1, and I was plotting it at that point 1, 1. But what if this was actually the coordinates of something in terms of my beta basis, my other basis? What would that look like in my standard basis? Well, what I'd like to do is think of this whole curve, a big list of coordinates in my beta basis, and see what it looks like in my standard basis. But to do that, all I have to do is convert these beta points over to those same coordinates in my standard basis. And I know how to do that. I just multiply it by my, my matrix P that's converting over. So if I do that right in my equation, I can simply take this point times this matrix, this matrix whose columns are my new basis vectors. And now I can see what that curve would look like if I was talking about all those points in the beta basis. All right, so that concludes this visualization application, and that concludes this video. Thank you.